Sawe Omnibus. So I was recently watching a lot of Mr. Medicare's videos, and what really seemed to strike me, especially when it comes to the drama he both covers and uncovers, is how underdeveloped and lacking a lot of people's basic social skills are. I think the best example was with Jonathan Ross, an individual that Jim both covered and interacted with, who ended a conversation with him by shouting death threats before letting out an ear-shattering scream. Now, anyone who's watched that video knows that Ross obviously has some deep mental issues. But the problem is that his and his friend's behavior throughout the experience, though extreme, is in its fundamental expression unfortunately very common online behavior. The outbursts, the lack of restraint, the lack of any basic respect. So what I'm broadly talking about here is online drama, and hopefully over the course of this video I can give some advice on how to spot it, avoid it, and resolve it. So what is drama? Well I think I'll start by stating what drama is not. Drama is not a heated argument about a non-personal topic. Two people going at it over something like politics, even very controversial issues, is not in itself drama so long as it's contained to that topic. Drama is not criticizing a person's behavior. If a person has been acting inappropriately and you call them out or you discuss the person's behavior with others, although it may seem like drama and can involve drama, it's again not itself drama. Disliking a person, for whatever reason, is not drama. We aren't going to get along with everybody, and usually this just resolves itself by not interacting with them, or if it's a professional setting, you deal with it by finding a way to coexist in a professional manner that won't interrupt workflow. From this, I think we can get a better idea of what drama is. For definition, I think drama can be defined as a conflict between two or more people within a given community over personal issues or personality which acts in the detriment of that community and a detraction from its primary purpose. Now, I think for people watching this video, most of us are probably involved in some form of online community. And as technology develops, people are finding that their social interactions are happening more and more online. Because of this, I think it's necessary to develop more appropriate ways of social interaction online, both because the medium itself is different and because of the switch to online and other social changes, a lot of people seem to have not developed proper social skills in the first place. Now, I think the platform that most of us are familiar with when it comes to having these online communities is Discord. Discord is a program that allows users to join and create servers in which you can create multiple text and voice channels to organize discussion of the given subject of that server. Its problem, I would say, is that it's a very addicting program as, opposed to Skype or Google Hangouts in which you need to set up the call, Discord is instantaneous and you can get on and off within seconds, post images and text within the various channels. Platforms like Discord are are increasingly becoming hubs for various online communities, and I've noticed that they're also becoming hotbeds of drama. So how do we deal with the online drama? Well, I think that first we need to be able to identify drama when it arises, and I think there are two primary sources of drama. The first source is what I call personal-impersonal conflation. This is what I think the most common form of drama is, and is the easiest to fall into as it can arise from very small incidents. So let's say we have a discord dedicated to the discussion of Shakespeare and two people are arguing over which of Shakespeare's tragedies is better, Macbeth or Hamlet. Now again, even if this gets heated, it's not drama, but it becomes drama when either one person in criticizing the other makes a personal attack against them, or when someone is criticized and conflates that criticism to be a personal attack on them. Now the second source of drama typically is what I call toxic individuals. These are individuals who either intentionally or unintentionally seek to sow conflict within a community and to actively detract the community's focus away from its primary goal to either conflict with each other or direct it against the toxic individual. Now I think we better know these people as trolls, but I think what should be taken into consideration is that not every troll is an intentional one. Some people, unfortunately, just because of their personality alone, just seem to generate conflict. So how do we deal with these sources of drama? Now, I think it's first important to note that the structure of the medium of online interaction is what leads to these sources of drama in the first place because let's think of how these communities translate to real life. Now, it's no secret that these communities tend to be predominantly male, and in real life there are, and were, predominantly male communities centered on something from sports to politics to drinking. We have communities that are male spaces where men get together and interact socially, and the conversation usually switches back and forth from a discussion of the primary topic to general lighthearted conversation. Now, as far as I'm aware, these communities rarely have to deal with toxic individuals, primarily because trolling doesn't translate 
to real life. If a toxic individual said or did the things online in a real life community, they'd get their ass kicked, and even more fundamentally, they probably wouldn't even be in the community in the first place. And as for personal, impersonal conflation, in real life communities, the temptation to cross the boundaries or display petty behavior is greatly mitigated by two factors. Number one is that these boundaries are a lot better defined and our desire to cross them lessened because in real life, we have the ability to read body language. We can sense the emotion and thoughts of a person much better when we can see how they physically respond as opposed to just hearing the inflection in their voice and what they're saying. The other factor, and the one I think that is more influential, or at least more direct, is that if you say something that clearly crosses the line in a real life conversation that's completely inappropriate, the other guy will probably punch you in the mouth, and deservedly so. And generally, the way men respond to this is you take the hit, get up, and apologize. We admit we were wrong, and we accept the punishment. And hopefully the other guy accepts this, forgives you, and you move on. Now obviously these two factors are absent online. There isn't the ability to interpret body language, even with the webcam it's difficult and it's not the same. And when we cross the line, there is no immediate repercussion. I think, though, there is a third factor that also has an impact on facilitating online drama. See, in real life conversations, if things get too heated or personal, it's almost like our fight or flight reflexes begin to kick in. We're in a high stress level situation, we can't resolve this normally, so we get the idea to either lash out, fight, or just walk away. Now I think that usually when this happens in real life, both parties are sort of able to tell through body language when they reach this point and they mutually agree to walk away and cool off. The problem online is that, again, because we can't tell body language, we don't know when we've reached that point, and in my experience, the decision to walk away is not a mutual one. Whereas, in real life, it's not always an option to just, in a social environment, walk away without it being very detrimental to your place in that community, and you physically have to leave. Online, all you have to do is push a button, and all the critical voices and stress go away instantly. Rather than you leaving the environment, which is a lot more difficult, you have the ability to instantly make the environment environment go away. So where does this leave us? It seems that because of the differences between online and real life, the safeguards that normally prevent this sort of drama from happening are down and we're going to have to deal with it. So I think that what we can do when it comes to the first drama source comes down to being more aware of and careful with what we say and how we say it. We need to differentiate between criticisms of our ideas and our person, and know not to make personal attacks. And I know this is very basic stuff, but drama seems to be everywhere, so obviously people either don't get this or aren't making the effort to practice it. Now as to how to develop this and to have better online conversations, I think it's necessary to be in real life communities where these safeguards do exist, and when online, try and emulate that. I know it's a stretch, but I don't think it would hurt to treat online conversations as though the people you were speaking to were in the room with you. Because I think the way we tend to approach these online communities is the reverse of how we approach real life ones. In real life communities, we approach them with the attention of what we can do for that community. That in this circumstance, we exist to serve and better the community. Online, however, we see communities as there to serve us. That we can make it pop in and out of existence whenever we want, and that our interactions on it are trivial, and thus we shouldn't take the same care as to how we interact with people. So again, I think that the best advice I can give to prevent and deal with online drama is, think before you speak, join a real life community, and treat online communities as if they were real life. Now a disclaimer, a big disclaimer, I am absolutely not saying you should pretend that the online is real life, but that you should treat the people online as if they were right in front of you for the purpose of preventing drama. And lastly, you should approach these communities as if you were there to serve them rather than the community being there to serve you. The community and the people still exist whether you're on it or not. Essentially, try behaving online like you would in real life, and I think we can condition ourselves to behave better and not have as much drama. Lastly. How do we deal with toxic individuals? Well, this is actually quite easy. It's not difficult to identify toxic individuals, tell them what they're doing wrong, and if it continues, you can easily expunge them from the community. So that's my take on online drama and how to deal with it. Diabana. Mit dem Bart, mit dem langen Bart. 
Da schwärmten unsere Eltern von der guten alten Zeit. Sie liegt so fern und weit, die alte Kaiserzeit. Doch war sie wirklich besser, diese gute alte Zeit, als einst der Opa Pali, oh Mama hat wohl gefeit. Ja, mit Jagdgesang und mit Hörnerklang, rings um Fair Berlin, durch die Wälder zieht. Ja, mit Jagdgesang und mit Hörnerklang, ritt die Oma Mama mit dem Opa Doch sie hielten an und küssten sich, sonst wären wir.